Okay, recording. Right, so. <coughs> Sorry, she was oh, Oop, hang on. So, uh, everybody's had a chance to review the minutes. All happy with that? Approved? Thank you very much, Elaine. Hi. Um, do we want to add anything to the agenda at the moment or just happy to take it as it is? Did, did I, did I uh, miss any updates? Anything that we should put on here before we... No? All right. So Nick's joined us today. That's, uh, <laughs> that's very helpful. Maybe I can start with Eurogames update. And find the unmute button. There it is. <laughs> yes. Um, so things have moved on a little bit since uh, we last spoke. And uh, pleased to say that the the world here is uh, becoming slightly brighter, literally, because the clocks changed last night. So uh, although it is now dark, because it is uh, ten past nine at night. But yes, the evenings are getting longer. Um, Denmark is. Um, slowly in the process of reopening society after a lockdown, which has been in place since early December. Um, and things are starting to get better. So we're seeing uh, sports groups can now meet outside in groups of up to 50, which is good. Um, and we're seeing things like um, sort of bars and restaurants and what have you with dates when they can hopefully reopen, but that won't be until mid May. Um, at this rate. So we have been promised, well not promised, that's the wrong word to use, we have been advised by the Danish government that um, we can expect a near a near enough to normal Danish summer. The Danish summer is the month of, uh, month of July, so by August we hope that um, that's a fairly good sign for um, Eurogames. What we don't know unfortunately is what's going to happen about the world of the border controls. So at the moment, um, you are not permitted to enter Denmark unless you have what's called a worthy cause. And a worthy cause would cover things like attending a funeral, um, attending a, a, you know, a, a critical purpose, essentially. So not um, tourism in any way, shape or form at the moment. So we don't know what's going to happen with our borders at the moment. Um, so they are very still very much closed. And there's a lot of quarantine required at the moment. So we that's the only bit we don't know at the moment. The... Insider information I have from the organising team at Copenhagen 2021 is that um, they had five scenarios. One was that one extreme was cancel everything, and the other stream was go full head with everything as, as they planned. Those two are probably not going to happen. So it's positive in terms of it's not going to get cancelled, but not so much in terms of everything will be open as normal. So we kind of expected those two. So should the events go ahead, there will probably be a degree of um, whether it be limited numbers or social distancing or whether um, limitations on the, the validity of having to have some form of corona vaccination or um, uh, uh, corona test before attending an event, um, we don't know yet. So we'll have to see what happens. The, the way that they're opening um, hairdressers, uh, which doesn't really affect me, but um, hairdressers <laughs> and... Uh, uh, bars and things is that you have to have a a what's called a corona passport which we've all got on an app now on our phones um and that that is updated every time you go for a test so you have a test val a negative test valid 72 hours or before um every time so it's going to become a a bit of a test 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 which is the the strategy we've been operating with up till now but um so we don't really know so i'd imagine that some of that will continue but we hope that um, in the next few weeks or so, we should get a little bit more information on that. But uh, that's where we are for now. In terms of the games, registrations are um, are fairly good. We suspect probably from a lot from uh, from local or neighbouring countries, um, or whether there will be some people who I'm sure many are on this call hoping to travel. Um, it's about 137 at the moment for the the 10 and 5Ks, which is, is 
a fairly expected number. Um, registration is still free at the moment. It's open and um, you can cancel it at any time. Um, and we will make it, and the, the team are making a decision in mid April as to what happens or what the scenario will actually be. So that's everything we have at the moment. And we'll hopefully keep our fingers crossed for more news soon. Any questions? <laughs> Not that I can answer them, but I'll try. Chris, can we ask, as long as we have Nick going, can we ask him any uh, information about Blackpool? Yeah, uh, yeah. can I ask you about Black Yep, go ahead. I was just going to ask, Nick, is it possible you're going to end up with a Tokyo situation where it's only Danish people who are participating? I don't, I, don't, I, I, I genuinely don't know. There, there is talk at the moment about whether the European Union countries will form some kind of agreement with the Corona passports type arrangement. Um, so whether that will happen at, at the moment, I just genuinely don't know. Okay. So we're at the moment kind of opening the Danish society with this Corona passport idea and whether that will happen with any other countries or not, I don't know. Yeah. Let's keep an eye on it. Um, Absolutely. Okay. And to Richard's point, um, Blackpool. Yes, Blackpool. Um, so Chris, who is the guy that has started Blackpool, is an ex-member of um, Edinburgh Frontrunners. He moved um, to Blackpool for work and he's setting up the club there. And they had their first run this morning. Um, so he's very keen. He's taking all the, the good ideas from the Edinburgh club with him. Um, I've been in touch with him and I've let him know that we'll, you know, we're there to help and support with everything he needs. Um, and as soon as the club gets more established and up and running, we'll seek to put an approval through for him. So will he, he'll update the membership numbers. I think that's the sticking point right now. Yeah, the the the, the challenge is, of course, is that he's not in. He's not proposing to charge any any membership fees or anything like that, or do any formal register. It's a very informal club, as many of the many of the clubs are. Um, he's already registered the club with the Association of Running Clubs in the UK. Um, so and that's all been signed off. So he is an established formal running club on the register. Um, but um, yeah, he'll he'll keep. I'll keep in touch with him. Um, he's he's kind of very keen to to get things going. He's been in touch with all the other front runner clubs in the UK, and they're all supporting him. And they'll go up and and run with the team when they get themselves going. But yeah, I've let him know that we're where we are and what we will do for him if we need anything. He's building a nice foundation. Uh, we don't mm. really have rules about who the members are. And, and I know there are some clubs, basically the members mm -hmm. are, are anyone who's on their Facebook page and others yep. are the members who show up for the runs. Um, mm. If he had five people this morning or eight, however many he had, tell them to put them on the registration. Yeah. Maybe put his yeah. uh, Facebook and, page. And unfortunately, it was thwarted by the good old Northern British weather this morning, which was a beautiful, disgusting, windy, rainy day. Um, which is quite typically Blackpool, unfortunately. So the numbers weren't great for the first one, but he has had, um, he told me he had about 10 or 11 people write to him during the week to express interest. So I guess we'll see how it goes in the next couple of weeks, but I will let him know, just update it as it goes. Okay. So just tell we'll us when, when we should complete yeah, we'll, That'll be great. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do. Okay, uh, great. We travel club. So I know there is interest in the, in the club. Yeah. There will be. I have a, a, another question. It's probably, it's not my region, but it is in Europe, is that there's a club that's been established for a long time in Lille in Northern France. They have been using the word Lille front runners for about the last two or three years. They used to be two or three people meeting up at a weekend. Um, and they're now probably about five or six people. And in the summer, they've been up to about 10 or 15 people meeting quite regularly. They seem to be a much more established club now. They've been doing a lot more, but they do not want to engage with us. I've written to them in English. I've written to them in French. Um, and I've been told, yes, well, thank you for letting us know. We'll definitely consider this and get back to you. Um, so I just wonder whether any of you had any experience of dealing with clubs that are using the front runner's name, but not actually affiliating in any way. Yep. Tucson doesn't want to affiliate, but they're called mm -hmm. um, We had and Spokane, Spokane as well. Yeah. We had them as a member. Now they're not, but they're still running. They just ignore all of our call. I've called okay. and texted. Uh, by the way, uh, Chris, uh, according to um, Kelvin, says he's trying to log in. Do you see anybody? No, he's not on the Google one. Not and the he, Google. And he has, 
he I haven't got a chime from Zoom to say he's in the waiting room. So but I gave him the link and he says he's on the link. <sighs> They're from runners, they even have a jacket. Oh, here we are. I'm looking at them. They have live from runners jackets and uniforms. <laughs> well, so it's always a Important to get the merch. Uh, with Brisbane Front Runners, they actually turned into quite a large club um, without any of us noticing. Uh, but uh, <laughs> then I reached out to them and they were happy to be part of the uh, membership. And of course, with Perth, we had Perth and then they went away. And one of our guys went over there and kickstarted something that um, has now got you know 80 or 90 people that run for that club. Yeah. So um, we don't have any issue with uh, with people wanting to be part of the organization, but it's just about right. <clears throat> making sure you reach out to them. So if you've tried, I don't know what else you can do unless you I want keep, to I've tried a couple a deputy, of times over the years. <laughs> unless you want to send a deputy to Lille and, uh, you know, an ambassador to, to uh, Not, you sort can't, them out. Unfortunately get it, you can't get anywhere near them at the moment, unfortunately, but there we go. Anyway, <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll leave it for now and maybe try again in a year or so. Keep, I'll just keep being a pain. They'll give up in the end, I'm sure. When we start, hey, giving, hey, out, when we start giving out Brooks money to all the clubs worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> clubs that True. Don't want to join us. Yeah. So, so Nick, so I, I have had some similar frustrations as Richard and I mentioned. We have two groups in the U.S. Western region who we mm -hmm. know are active and operating under the banner of front runners. That's Spokane and Tucson. Mm -hmm. we've contacted them over and over and I, I sort of feel like you hit a wall and unless there is some, you can give them some incentive for joining the international front runners network. There are certain people who lead these clubs who just either don't have time, don't want to deal with, you know, another organizational task or something like that. But I just found my ability to give them an incentive was sort of a, a deal breaker. Like I, I couldn't really provide them a valid reason to join the network if they didn't want to. They don't want to have to pay. And there's really no compelling reason for them to join if they're just not interested. Both of so, them are too small to pay. Um, yeah. you know, my, I went to them, I remember talking to, um, Tucson and I said, well, it's good to be in the directory so that you visitors know where to go. And they did, he didn't want visitors. He said, well, we're, we're a local club. We really don't want people <laughs> coming. There. They do get people that go in from Phoenix. Um, but honestly, that, that goes to what we've discussed for all the years I've been on. What is our, what is our reason for existence? And, um, that might be, might be a discussion for us. Yeah, because we've always said that, you know, listing on our website, getting contacts with other clubs, being represented by in the Federation of Gay Games, um, you know, just the whole. And then the, 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 uh, the sort of more ephemeral part is to, is to affiliate with, with people worldwide and help promote the, the whole thing worldwide, you know, be a part of it. But it, yeah, it is a tough sell sometimes. Right. Support. But, but now that we're also, you know, last the last two years, 10 clubs have gotten $5,000 each from Brooks. And that's now going to expand worldwide to all of our clubs. So, it, and it, maybe we won't be, we'll talk about how we're going to distribute, but um, maybe that will be a further incentive as they see clubs around them getting $500 or $1,000 and they're not, maybe. Cool. Maybe I'll um, throw that that way. Just they did just bought Leo's just bought a lot of new kit from um, a big sports chain store, so maybe that could have helped. Cool. Okay. Um, okay, so that's the Eurogames update, and it's an AGM discussion. Uh, we I guess we've got to set a date for the AGM. We want to put that at the end, or do you want to talk about that now? Uh, don't we still have to wait to see if we're actually going to get to go to Copenhagen? I feel like we need to move this to the next meeting. <laughs> yeah. So I suppose we can still set a date for the AGM, and we can say it's going to be in Copenhagen, or we can say it's going to be on Zoom. It'll be on Zoom anyway, right? So do we want to 
Nick, is it likely, is it still a moving feast? Are we saying that Copenhagen date might change or? The, date, the dates won't change, the dates are fixed. It's just, it's, it's, it's the, the way in which the games will happen. So I think we're all fairly confident that something will happen. It's just in what format. So the events will happen from the uh, Wednesday the 18th until Saturday the 21st of August. So usually we'd have the AGM on the day before, would we? The start of the gay games? We should, We've done that often. It, we, we shouldn't do that again. That, that precluded a lot of people in Paris who mm. hadn't arrived yet or were just arriving that day. I think we should have it when everything is underway, maybe in the middle or maybe yeah. towards the end. Yeah, so the, issue, see, the issue there has always been if there's a conflict with events. So we just need to look at the timing carefully. The, the challenge you've got is that the 18th is the opening ceremony day. The 19th, you've got track and field all day. You've got the 10 to 5K in the evening. The Friday, you've got track and field all day and the half marathon is in the evening. It's the, the same thing happens with the gay so, Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Right. Easy, busy. So, absolutely. So, so my suggestion would be that probably you do it on the Thursday. Because if people are people are doing the five and ten k, they're not going to be doing track and field during the day. What's Thursday? The nineteenth. No, I mean, what events are on Thursday? Uh, there's track and field events during the day, and then there's the five and ten k in the afternoon slash evening. It's in the evening actually. Oh, so you're saying do the event during the day? Basically, we're going to step on top of track and field. You'll step on top of track and field because track and field is all day Thursday and all day Friday. Right. And, and the closing. We can't put it in somewhere on opening day or closing day. Before. You could you could do it you could do it on the Wednesday morning, but you have but I, there's a fair chance that there will still be a lot of European clubs travelling that morning because it's only an hour hour and a half flight from most of Europe, yeah. so most people would travel Wednesday morning. And what about closing day? Uh, the closing day is going to be the so the closing is the parade, which is a World Pride parade, and that will start at lunchtime on the twenty first. Oh. And assemb assembly for that will be from mid morning onwards. So I would suggest either you're going to have to clash with track and field, or do it on the Wednesday before the opening. Or advertise it enough in advance that delegates make plans around it. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would, yeah. Track and field, we, I know that there are a lot of people from San Francisco, especially San Francisco track and field, also from Seattle and from New York who do track and field events. So mm -hmm. we're going to lose people, but maybe not delegates. Yeah. What time do the track and field events start? I have no idea the precise timetable yet. Uh, right. Shall we? Shall we say Thursday morning and leave it open at that? Yep. I don't think there's any problem with doing that. Uh, 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 and I dare say that if I, if we go with that, I can probably speak to Tommy and work out a venue. If it's near, uh, the, tra near the track and field. If it's fact, Thursday. The track and field. If it's Thursday morning European time, that's late Wednesday night American time. It's it's okay to inconvenience Americans every now and then. Oh, oh, yeah, it'll be, oh, yeah, it'll be after mid, midnight sometime. <laughs> if we gave you a you are friend. dreaming, Richard. <laughs> What are we talking about? Six hours? Six hours to the East Coast? Um, right. Yeah. I guess if, if we're planning, there will be a break during the day during the track and field at some point. So I'd imagine that there's going to be a chance to do it during the day. Mm -hmm. But then there's still six hours difference between Copenhagen and New York. Right. And what time is the five? We don't know the times for the five and ten. No. If we were to make it an evening. Uh, the five and ten. I can find that for you. Bear with me. I mean, they're pretty quick. And the sun doesn't go down till 2 a.m. So <laughs> the word isn't, yeah. we're not that far north. Um, <laughs> da, 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 da. 
No, we don't. We should start a club in Reykjavik. <laughs> Over the volcano from here. Yeah. Fantasy. It's not on there yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's not good for us either, Wayne. <laughs> well, it depends so, on what time. Yeah, what time? Oh, actually, it's not too bad for us. Sydney is all right. Well, we'll be on. We'll be off daylight saving by then. <laughs> oh, that's true. I need to show. Some people could be on, some people could be off. Yeah. It's probably... Mm, 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 there isn't a time scheduled for it yet because the... Because Spa for the organising people won't have put in for the actual time of it. Okay. Because, again, the programme is so up in the air, but it's likely to be about 6 o'clock. Why don't we just say Thursday and time to be determined and maybe yeah. we'll discuss an evening meeting after the 5 and 10K. Maybe we'll make it dinner to attract people. We'll say, hey, we're going to do a dinner. We're going to do drinking and food. And come, come there, to there's a social event planned after the run. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the calendar is very full. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not that many days, right? So. No, it's only a full day event. Right. Oh, well, we'll put it down for Thursday. To Thursday be... during the day would be the best one. I know that's not ideal for everybody, but well, actually, we will find a solution. Actually, aside from the people, the poor people on Pacific time in San Francisco, um, Thursday through the day, there is a slot which isn't too bad at one o'clock. Yeah. But, you know, it only inconveniences people in that time zone there. 7 a.m. East Coast, um, 6 a.m. Central, 5 a.m. Mountain, 4 a.m. Pacific, mm. 3, 3, 3 a.m. Hawaii. <laughs> yes, there's that too. So anyway, put the date and let's, let's table it until the next to see if the Euro Games is happening. I mean, not happening, if, it's, if we can actually go to Euro Games. <laughs> Okay. So the next item is the Gay Games update. Gay Games update. Oh. <laughs> Here it comes. Uh, just so you all know, we're, uh, well, Xander and I and, uh, are on a particular committee called the Site Selection Committee. So we're working on 2026 um, and we're answering loads of questions we've interviewed three um 10 people for the role of site inspector and we're down to a group of three or four um right over 49 uh well plus the uh media people you don't know anything bloody ross <laughs> shut up <laughs> um, part of the group too so yes um so we're down to three or four people which will go to the board of the federation and then they will be selected to go and look at uh, the venues in valencia guadalajara and munich um uh, and hope fingers crossed they can do that without any corona issues uh it, particularly mexico uh, is looking okay that they can get in uh, in and out, but uh, Europe might be a problem. Uh, so it could be delayed. Uh, Hong Kong's moving forward, as you should all be aware. They got loads of money from Marriott Bonvoy and YouTube. And I believe there's another one that's potentially coming. So that's terrific for Hong Kong. Uh, really good news. Um, I personally in australia we're having trouble selling the gay games i don't know what's happening in what the feeling is in other countries i'm getting i'm i the problem here in australia is is that we've got so many 
Asian people, we've got so many former people from Hong Kong that the feeling is that uh, people will not go. So uh, that's what we're facing because uh, we get a lot of news from Hong Kong. So people are right on top of what's going on there. I, I'd love some input, but I, everybody asks sort of doesn't really know much about it or uh, they're only seeing what, what's coming out of the Gay Games Hong Kong people. So if anybody's got any input. <laughs> I've been uh, meeting with uh, the group of uh, the Committee for Diversity and Inclusion. Uh, and it's a group that uh, I've always been interested in, but because I'm not a woman, I'm not allowed to be an, uh, an officer. Yeah. That I, <laughs> I can see your brain already working. So they will not let me uh, be part of the, an officer of diversity and inclusion, even though I really uh, talk to them about it, but they're, they're, interest, they're not interested in me. However, they will be very interested in Sami if she wants to be part of the board of directors. If she's into, uh, if she knows something about diversity and inclusion, the meeting was very, very productive the other day because it was a lot, a lot of about, um, uh, you know, the, the importance that there is not enough women. I mean, look at here, there's only one, right? She, and uh, yeah, Emma also. Oh, but Emma's not here. Right she's now. not on our team. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, and also I brought the issue of age. And I'm gonna ask Wayne about this because I think, I don't know if he was in Cleveland or in Paris where when the races were awarded by age, um, did they, didn't they go like every 10 years versus every five years? Five. No, it's every five years. Right, but I thought there was some issue there, but may, may, maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, so um, it was, they're, they're working really hard uh, uh, to include, um, uh, you know, all the LGBTQ plus members and they're, they're, we're a little behind with that, especially because the Federation of Gay Games have been without an officer for quite a while. I mean, we're missing like four or five officers still there. So Sami, if you're interested, think about it. <laughs> sounds good. We'll, we'll, we can talk about that on the side. All right, sounds good. I'll see how I can help. Yeah. Nick, did, did you have something? Nick, did you have something to say about Hong Kong? I thought you were about to make a point about. No, no, no. no I, I, just from a European point of view, I think that, that, that generally the concept of travel anywhere at the moment is completely alien. So I don't, you know, governments everywhere are telling us you're not going to travel anywhere outside your own country in 2021. So 2022 is is likely to get the the backlog of everyone trying to travel and see friends and relatives. So I don't even. Whereas. If you'd asked three years ago, Hong Kong 2022 was very much on people's um, radar yeah, or somewhere they were going to go, but I'm not entirely sure where it sits now. I certainly haven't heard any mention of it from um, contacts that I've got, but I, it, it could go the other way. It could be suddenly everyone wants to go to something completely different and completely, um, uh, you know, a new experience, and that's where they head to. But it, it certainly is not on many people's radars at the moment, if I'm honest. Mm. Well, I know the Australian government's working with IATA about this vaccine passport idea for international travel, and so they're pro they're testing that at the moment. I don't, I'm not sure if everyone else is doing that too. So it might be that by the time the Gay Games turns up, um, it will be a different landscape. So I guess uh, we just have to keep our eye on it. Not to mention, as Wayne alluded to, there the political situation, which is another kicker, which we didn't have a couple of years ago, and now suddenly it's a big, um, it's a big issue. We, we have approached uh, Hong Kong and asked them, because uh, they're talking about doing a soft registration, uh, similar to what they've done in Eurogames. Um, Expression uh, of interest sort of thing, save the date. Uh, yeah, and you can sort of register, but you don't have to pay anything. So they can start doing some of their planning so they know how many people are going to be in each event. Um, and we've also asked them to look into getting some sort of an event insurance that we could all pay X amount of dollars for. It's a small amount and it will cover you for the event insurance if it doesn't happen. Um, the problem, at, in, the immediate problem for Xander and myself is that the, the AGM for um, the Federation this year is in November 
and is in Hong Kong. And as you know, Chris, we've Australians have been told we can't won't be travelling until at least October. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd yeah. say I'd say it's going to be a Zoom. Uh, well, the problem for us is is that's a huge time to go and visit all the sites. Um, and and when we talk about it in a minute, um, all the other events that goes on that affects front runners. For example, our our conference, our we you know we've had pasta parties, we've had a drink session. There's a number of other events that go on as as well. Um, oh well, so you'll, we just have, you'll have to adapt, that. Wayne. I've got I'm setting up four hospitals in China over Zoom, so I know how you feel. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> particularly anyway. when you see some of the cabling but anyway yeah <laughs> so uh yeah so they're part of the problems okay well we better move on um so gay games update is there anything from no that? uh trail the good news is that trail running will probably be in the all three host city bidding cities for 2026 are looking at putting in trail running so we now will have what's going to be considered our fifth event. Jolly good. All right, is that the end of the Gay Games update? Uh, unless anybody's got questions, we're, we've been meeting, 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 meeting. <laughs> okay, uh, the next item is the newsletter. Um, I have not done my task in this and gone out to people and asked them to start work on videos here in Australia, but I will do that. I'm hoping to get a meeting after Easter. Um, so I'm happy to keep that task, but if anybody else would like to volunteer to do something similar in their area to put together a small or several small videos like reels or TikToks or something like that for front runner to publicize front runner clubs in their region. Anybody else want to volunteer to do that? Or are you happy to wait for a couple of months? Or a month, let's say a month, the end of April. See if we can get something happening by the end of the April. So that's, I'm, I'm not hearing a roar of uh, desperate people out there who want to do this, so I'll leave it at that. Um, Chris, what, what is it that you're going to use, you want to use those videos for? Oh, so with the uh, last AGM and then a subsequent meeting, we talked about how we're going to possibly um, do some more outreach other than the newsletter, which is quite long form and difficult for some people to access. And since there's a lot of social media out there, we were looking for something that was a bit more accessible. And so Facebook and Instagram have this thing called Reels now, which is like short 60 second videos. Mm -hmm. So you can make uh, you know, a, a, short, um, a short movie about your club. So I was going to talk to my clubs in Australia and, um, and Asia, uh, Asia Pack about uh, putting together something small that we could all have a look at and see what it looked like. So the idea would be that people would just do a 60 second video. We actually had a short video presentation for our AGM, Sydney Frontrunners AGM, um, that I thought was um, a good thing to build on. But it was, of course, it was like a PowerPoint that was a movie, you know. Um, so these, the format of these TikTok slash reels, these short, short form social media videos is quite different. So you kind of need people who are good at doing them um, or, you know, have to practice a little bit to make them. So they've usually got a bit of music. They've got a bit of movement. Um, they have a bit of information and then maybe, you know, like a call to action or something at the end, come and meet, come and meet us, go for a run or something like that. So I was thinking we would do something like that to show people. Um, well, and most... I follow a lot of clubs on Instagram and a lot of the clubs create Instagram stories, which are sort of like that. Yes. Short form videos with music and graphics and things like that. So clearly people are capable of doing that. I think it's just a matter of corralling that mm. into probably a request, a specific request and for them to submit them somewhere. So, I mean, I could reach out to my clubs and ask them. I know that they're, they create Instagram stories all the time, but- So I, we, have, it, we have an IFR um, presence on Facebook that people seem to access quite a lot. I think that's probably the logical landing place for some of that with Instagram as well. Do we, right. Wayne, we have an Instagram 
International Front Runners Instagram or just the Facebook one? I don't use Instagram, so I don't, I don't know. Hmm. Who's the is uh, who's the keeper of the International Front Runners Facebook account? I've got that. Yeah. Yeah. So we need maybe need somebody to do a little Instagramming as well. I feel um, like we have an Instagram page that somebody set up, not not us. I think I, maybe Alex or maybe um, or maybe Booty. Somebody. I feel like I, I we, there was a discussion about Instagram recently, so we should look out. Uh, oh. We should, uh, look into that i guess that's true it could be a project for booty couldn't it that would be a good project for booty in fact reaching out to the clubs and getting them to put together this instagram the, your your short form video would be a great project for him mm. okay all right well I'll, i might uh, i might give him some work then see if he wants to do that okay Unless there is anybody... a there is a instagram account for international front runners um Michael, does it say who set it up? The admin? No, it's it it doesn't. It's got a contact email and phone number with a three six zero area code. I don't know if that means anything to anyone. What's the email address? It's international dot at gmail dot com. I have no idea who that goes to. <laughs> But Chris, there's a big old picture of you posted on. There is. Their Instagram. Their Instagram no feed. No posts. <laughs> <laughs> As I don't have very many posts actually, and it is a bit Australia centric. Come to think of it. Alden, is that your phone? Er your phone area? No, it's not. <laughs> it could be Melbourne, Wayne. Oh, O3. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Without I, without the O. I recall talking about an Instagram account recently within the last few months and it probably was booty. So let's reach out to him, maybe see if he'll do it. Yep. All right. I'll do that. Oh, you know what? Joe owns it. I'm just seeing the very oh. first post. It, it says, my name is Joe Jenkins and I'm the communication chair for international. Oh, okay. so I that think makes Joe, much more sense. Okay. Yeah, I think Joe started yes. it. Yeah. yeah. But, much better. But Joe told us, I thought he dropped off of all of social media. It, it hasn't been it, up. Yeah. it hasn't been active for quite some time. We maybe just need to get the details from him, and then we can start putting some more stuff onto it, populating it with things. And Michael, if you could um, find us some uh, some people who are wanting to post things to that, sure. Um, then we can go from there. That sounds like a a start. And also, I suppose we should talk about another newsletter in time for the AGM. Um, do we want to go through the usual process or does anybody have a better idea for how to put a newsletter together for the next AGM? Is Joe going to do the newsletter? Well, he's um, not able to come to this meeting. Okay. So I'm guessing we're going to deputize him unless somebody else is going to do it. Well, that's kind of his, that's his position. And that's his bags, yes, so. Yeah. In, unless he unless he comes back and says no he won't um i'm going to say he's going to do it uh so do we do about the process that we went through last time did people feel that it was um getting better or is there something else we need to do to to fix it i know everyone wants to send you know thousands of words and hundreds of photos but uh it's really got to be a lot slimmer than that and i know joe's very frustrated but uh he does, a, he does a good job putting it together. Well, if they want to submit such a big document, they can put it on Facebook. <laughs> there, that's true. You can, hmm. yes, if they do all this work, it won't be wasted. All right, so we'll, we'll get that to Joe. And so um, we'll put out a call for um, articles, the same as we did last time after Easter with a, when do you think we should have this um, all finalized? By July? Well, by Earlier? Probably June. June? Because it seems to take a long time to get out. So if we make it June, right. it to be out by August. So mid-June. The, the, obviously I'm uh, stating the obvious, it's a, uh, hard to get people to submit content. You sort of have to 
badger them um, over and over and over to get back something. And the downside of a newsletter format like the one that we use is it's almost, the information is almost stale immediately after it's submitted. And if there's any delay in publication of the newsletter, things certainly are get stale, like obviously stale. Like for example, last time around, people were promoting an upcoming pride run, but by the time the newsletter got out, that pride run had come and gone. Um, so it just, the information was obviously outdated um, when you're talking about a pride run that's scheduled for upcoming November 6th, but you don't see the newsletter until January. So we just need to be sort of mindful of the type of information in there. When it's date specific stuff, that newsletter has got to get out on schedule. Otherwise the information just becomes invalid. It, I the date specific wonder, things could be put on the IFR calendar. Yeah. I almost wonder if we shouldn't work toward more of a blog format where the information is more timely and can be updated at a frequency that makes sense. And it's somewhat self supportive rather than have to funnel it to a person and wait for that person to sort of do what they need to do. Like there's a lot of pressure on Joe to get that all together and get it out. I feel like uh, if we do a blog, it ends up getting ignored eventually. I think yeah, initially I people will read it and then eventually people will stop reading it. Whereas the two or three time a year newsletter comes out, it's a little more impactful because it's you don't see it every day. But yeah, I agree, agree. That the, time, the, the date specific stuff shouldn't either shouldn't be on there or if we pass that date should have been edited out. Um, and we do have uh, our calendar on our page. We do have all of our Facebook pages uh, those should be where the date specific stuff should be. The clubs should be putting um, pride runs on their local Facebook, um, their local pages, the regional pages, the international pages. There's a lot of places to put it where date specific makes more sense. Agreed. Right. Yeah, trying to think about newsletters that I read, it's usually ones that are made by somebody that writes compelling content so i'm i'm not sure if it'd be very variable and that's the other thing with the, the newsletter is i think joe does a good job of smoothing out the variability of a lot of people's um articles so i think you do need an editing function somewhere in there to to cut it down but yeah blogs blogs also sort of um out of favor these days for more the more instant stuff with social media like facebook and um, and now coming forward, things like Insta and 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 TikTok and things like that. So uh, I think it's good that we revived the newsletter anyway. So let's give it another give it another whirl, and maybe we can um, have a think about anything, any new formats that we want to maybe work towards. If, if there's something that uh, people can come up with that's a bit easier to compose and more compelling. That'd be good. It does get read. I, I've heard from people in Hawaii when we were there, they read it. People in Philly read it. People in New York read it. I do get feedback that the, the newsletters, when they go out, they do get read. So mm. I, I feel like they are uh, they are making their point. Uh, but I just, yeah, it just needs to be honed a little bit. Maybe the articles need to be shorter uh, and uh, more, more date specific. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll reach out to Joe and get that process started. Uh, and now club renewals is the next item. Who do we have? So to I did make a list of, I did make a list of the outstanding ones. I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah, it was fantastic. Thank you, Alder. Uh, as far as, as far as the renewals for this year, so um, US, uh, Western US, it's Anchorage outstanding. Um, and uh, that's already been mentioned earlier that with there's follow-up. Um, Randy in uh, um, Central, there's Omaha and St. Louis. 
the Eastern US is Baltimore and Pittsburgh. For Canada, it's Montreal. And I know we've been talking about that. They've updated their information. We're just trying to follow up on their membership fees. Uh, in Europe, it's uh, just Aberdeen, the Northern, Northern Europe. Um, then there's none outstanding in Australia or in um, Mexico, Central and South America. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a it's an easier list there. Um, then um, southern southern U.S. There's a few there, but it tends to be smaller clubs: the Dallas, Lafayette, the Stonewall Club, uh, Tuscaloosa, and West Palm Beach. And then the the larger largest group is the Southern European, Middle East, Africa, and that's uh, Barcelona, Berlin, Bern, Cologne. Um, uh, Geneva, Hamburg, Lyon, Marseille. Um, uh, let's see, Nairobi, Nice, Tel Aviv, uh, Milan, Vienna. So several of those clubs are smaller clubs. So hopefully the reps know uh, just in, in contacting the clubs that they need to go in and just update their information in order to be current. There's no fees. Uh, that are that are due. So it's important that they go into the website with the information that was sent out in their renewal notice and uh, just update that information, just review it and uh, and submit it. That way it gets updated and that we know that the information is current. So that's really the important uh, the important part uh, for the reps in the communication with the clubs, just to make sure people are aware of that. Um, so out of there's 20 so there's 25 clubs that were outstanding uh, for this year that were members in 2020. And of those 25, uh, only eight are uh, ones that would have a fee uh, uh, due given their membership numbers. So it's, it's the, most of the clubs fall in the category of ones that just need to review their information to make sure it's all accurate. So is it worth, um... Kelvin, for example, reaching out to those, uh, a lot of Southern European states in there. Um. Right, I mean, that would be helpful if we can get them to have a look at their information and, and, and get those numbers up, yeah. Oh, and Kelvin just dropped off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he didn't like what he was hearing, uh-oh. <laughs> I've asked Kelvin a couple of times to reach out and asked if I could help. And so far, uh, I haven't heard a response from him on whether he has and whether he needs help. Um, if Kelvin comes back, we can ask him. But uh, honestly, within the next few days, next week, I'll probably just reach out myself. And because uh, you'll recall last year, it fell kind of to me just before the AGM. And I spent all week pulling my hair out fighting with the clubs. So I'd rather <coughs> have it again this year while I'm supposed to be enjoying Copenhagen. So, right. <coughs> right. So, <coughs> yeah, that's, that, that sounds good. I mean, probably could do with some help just given the diversity there. So that's, that's great. But I needed him to tell me he didn't do. I need to know if he did. Or right. If he did, I, I'd like to see what he sent. And if he didn't then I'd like to help him. It should come from him, but uh, right. like I said, I've, reached, I've asked him three or four times if I can help or if he's done it. And so if we don't get a response, I'll, I'll just take the Okay. Initiative. Well, we'll minute that anyway, so he can read it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's the club renewals. Um, uh, Are there any, any questions from the reps on any of that? At this area, are we okay? Have any of the non-renewals gotten back to any of the reps and any reason they haven't renewed? I had four. I just kicked three of them up the arse and they did it. Okay. <laughs> it's good. Dead easy. Yeah. <laughs> anyone to... No, some of, some of them, have, there are some that, have, that so Aberdeen is, is basically, they, I think the club stopped running because of COVID. They were new before COVID happened. And I think the Jason that was running the club has moved out of Aberdeen, moved back to Glasgow. So I think the club's actually now stopped. Oh, it's a shame. Yeah. Kelvin's. Kelvin. Yeah, I see he's back. Are you, Kelvin, can you hear us? Kelvin, are you there? He doesn't actually have a microphone, according to this. Okay. All right. Well, I'll. Uh... I'll, I'll reach out to him this week and yep. see if I can get him on the phone. 
So he's probably connecting to audio somehow. So we'll we'll, we'll just have to uh, maybe text him about that. Okay. So Richard, you'll do that. Okay. Um, and no new clubs that are outstanding that people have to vote on in the system. They're all we've all up to date. It's just the Blackpool. Just Blackpool. Okay. All right, uh, Brooks. Oh, that's me. I'm 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 sorry. I have to say I I've fallen behind with uh, my life, and I owe you guys um, a draft proposal that I was going to then send to Brooks once you um, approve it. It's basically they're asking for a proposal from us, um, suggesting how they're going to give us this year $25,000 and how we're going to distribute it. Uh, my plan is that we're going to, uh, I'm going to make a process that's somewhat inclusive of them so that they have an eye on the process. Um, and then also they would like to meet us in one of these meetings. Um, that's Brian and Lauren, two of them, but they said they really only can do it on a weekday. Um, so maybe the next meeting we can look at a weekday meeting. Um, but uh, I'll, um, I promise I will get that proposal out to everyone this week for comments. Um, and then maybe we can get it wrapped up and get it to them in the next uh, week or so, because then it has to go to their legal department, which reviews it. But I think our goal was to have this all happening before AGM. So we could either unveil, either unveil the, plant, the program at AGM or unveil the winners at AGM, use AGM as, as something on this. So, okay. So, um, well, we'll talk about that when we do the next meeting. You don't want to just arrange a special meeting just to talk to the Brooks people in case. Is this is this time that we've got here good for everybody? If it was a weekday, or is it only because it's a weekend that it works for everyone? I I'm know okay it's not, with it. It's not great for us, Wayne. But no. what about <laughs> everyone else? <laughs> everyone else is okay. If this was a no, Randy's not so happy. <laughs> I, I could take it a lunch hour and do it, you know, that's yep. fine. And it does seem like to make sense to have a special meeting for it, just so we can make sure we get the information covered. Yeah. Rather than, oh. well, well, the, somewhere there, well, the, um, the, the proposal, we don't need their involvement on the proposal. Um, they're, I, I'm pretty clear from my talks with them what, what we need to do. More, more of their meeting was, they just wanted to meet us. They just wanted to say hi and see who we are. Uh, they actually envision further involvement through the years, including um, maybe bigger involvement with uh, gay games and, and possibly even uh, Euro games. If, uh, if uh, they're, they're still waiting on Euro games to see what's happening with that. So uh, maybe they'll sponsor our AGM, maybe they'll sponsor an AGM dinner, AGM dinner by Brooks or AGM lunch by Brooks or something, you know, something. So, And is scholarship still on that list, Richard? So they're going to give us uh, our scholarship for gay games. Yes. Um, but the idea I, I think is we, and we can discuss it. The idea would be that the, this dispersal of $25,000 we spread amongst all of the clubs internationally. And then next year's $25,000, we use 5,000 from that. We basically give ourselves a, uh, an application. We apply to ourselves for $5,000 for our scholarship. Basically, we decide amongst ourselves that we're gonna use 5,000 to sponsor two or three people to go to Hong Kong. And then, then the rest of the 25, 20,000 would then get dispersed amongst the clubs worldwide. Does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. Well, 5,000 won't get you much, but yeah. That's what got us last year. We last time, and remember that we're, we're we're assuming FGG will um, kick in all of their donations. The free, the free. We don't know that for sure, but we hope. I've asked, I've, and uh, Paul Lustenberg has been, been in contact with me a few times, and I told him yes, we're working on it, and we're looking at okay. hopefully going more than two, and okay. um, he's very happy. So he's, okay. he hasn't given me any time limits. And keep in mind, the 5000 would be on top of what we raised from yes. everyone else. We raised 4000 last time with, with no help from them. So this yep. may end up being, a, and we didn't have a lot of time. So if we have more time, this may be 10000 We end up yep. with 5000 from them and 5000 from our clubs. No. 
Richard, do you know if Seattle still on, gets fast tracked an automatic 5,000? Yeah, every Seattle's year? An automatic. They're an automatic. That's their hometown okay. club. They said they, they automatically get theirs. All right. Thank you. They must have ruby slippers. Yeah. <laughs> They've got waterproof ones and windproof ones, I think. It's surprising that the Seattle club doesn't meet for their runs at Brooks headquarters. It's in sort of a central location. It's a good running spot, but they don't actually do that, which is surprising. Ryan said he's run with them, um, but I don't, yeah, I don't know if they've actually, I, I feel like in the past, I feel like there may have been a, a meeting or a tour at Brooks. I feel like I, I remember something like that, but that may have been from Danny's time. So anyway. I was when I lived in Seattle. I was a wear tester for them, and I used to go to their facility and try new shoes on a treadmill. And they hooked me up with electrodes and stuff like that. It was pretty fun. That was did conversion pay, therapy. Did you have to pay them? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Well, I, I've um, been wearing Brooks shoes for about fifteen years, so. I, don't need to be converted or um, hooked up to any electrodes for it. So. <laughs> You'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd love to go and see Seattle. I've uh, actually got a shirt from there, but I have never been. So I'd, be a, I'd love to go and um, have a run over there. But anyway. Uh, okay, so that's Brooks. We will try and set up then a meeting, a special meeting, Richard, um, just to talk to the Brooks people and We'll get your once we get your proposal out as well. We'll we'll talk about a time for that. Richard, Richard, do you think they want to hear anything in particular? Richard went to the bathroom. You'll have to wait for the. <laughs> oh, squeezing his lemon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, while we wait for him to come back, um, the other thing we've got on there is just to get ready for the AGM. We've got some positions coming up. So we probably need to start talking to people. I'll just get this up here. Uh, who yeah, might just like on that to... note, just on that note, everyone got the list I sent out, the latest corrections. And I just had a question if there's any, any concerns about how to read the list. <laughs> <laughs> just with the, uh... I'm very impressed actually, <laughs> that you've got all this genetics all mapped out here. That's very... <laughs> Who's having, was it um, expressions of daily, uh, oh, well, I can't remember, PDA, uh, PDA. Yeah, uh, public display of affection. Affection, yeah, yeah. There you, you just are. brought me my tea. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Mine's still asleep. Otherwise, we'd probably, we'd probably be treated to the show. It's Monday, 7 a.m. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I'm going to get to work. <laughs> yes. So... Um, yeah, who do we have that we, we need uh, to get some people on or um, like are any of these people can't participate in their position again because they've done it too many times, like Xander and Wayne have to rotate or something? I think, I think I'm due. I don't know. Right. Right. So it's Wayne's position up on the Federation delegate. And otherwise, it's the uh, uh, Randy's position, um, the um, yeah, Western um western region yeah uh wait no not the western region uh excuse me it's the uh um like i said R randy and then uh eastern u.s and europe and uh mexico central south america are their rep positions that are up for 2021 which which so i have the north or south so it's um so again, it's uh, southern, southern U.S., eastern U.S., northern, excuse me, northern Europe, and Mexico, Central, South America. So yeah, those, the list is there. It's by region number. Just if. <laughs> oh, sorry. So what? Uh... Now I can't remember how to freeze a pane. Here we are. Freeze the top right. Uh, 
Okay, so Wayne is coming up. Yeah, so Zan it's Wayne's Xander is safe. Right. Wayne's, do Wayne's doing the uh, lip sync challenge. <laughs> and so is it, is it a matter of, um, so two, it says here, two, three, five, seven. What's... Right, so those are the region numbers. Yeah. Yep. So that's central, central US, eastern US, five is northern Europe, and seven is Mexico, South, Central America. So this, the question mark here is, um, so they're not required. Those are the switch, but... No, so those are the positions that are, that are up for uh, election. And normally, again, so we handle that uh, within the regions. And so the, um, what we've often done in the past is the, if the, Regional rep doesn't want to run again. He sort of advertises it among his region and uh -huh. as part of the prep uh -huh. preparation for the AGM. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we've always done the, the other delegates at the AGM. And so there, you know, hasn't necessarily been a huge lead time, but it's only if, you know, if we know that there, if, the, if there is a vacancy that there may be a little more lead time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just need to let let people know that if they wanted to um, not run, then they've got to organize a replacement for the AGM. Right, they should spread the word around in their region. Mm. I mean, they're and they're welcome to spread the word anyway and have a and have a runoff, <laughs> even if they do want to run again, but. Yep. Um, it's up to the region. That's true. Yeah. So we need those, we just need those um, clarified by the time we go to the AGM for these the regions. AGM, right, right. Yep. So we need a vote from two, three, five, and seven, at least. Correct. which is, or I had it open a second ago. So Central US, Eastern US, Northern Europe, and Mexico, Central and South America. Right. Okay. Okay, anything else on that? No, and Richard's back. Oh, oh Richard. hello, Richard. <laughs> Richard, before you did your we, um, I, <laughs> I uh, wanted to ask: Do you think Brooks want to hear anything in particular from us? I we have. I'm pretty sure we have the money. It's not like we're bidding for the money. Um, they just want to see a formal proposal as to how we're going to uh, award and and uh, disperse it. Um, so, you know, my, my thought was that I uh, create a proposal that our committee, the steering committee as a whole, when we meet, we, uh, we spend a few minutes discussing clubs, or perhaps we do it by email, we, discussing the, uh, we discuss the uh, applications we receive from clubs around the world. And I guess the first thing we have to do is discuss how we get that word out. And um, that's kind of where I was hoping to use the AGM, either to announce the program, or if we're, if we're enough ahead of the curve to announce the winners of the program, if we've already gotten the word out and gotten the applications in. Um, no, they just, they're very nice people. They just want to meet us. They really like uh, the idea, the concept of international front runners. Yes. Yeah, so while you're away, I just said, um, so you, you're going to send the proposal out. You, what, what sort of time frame do you think you'll get around yeah, to doing I'm gonna, that? I'm going to try to get it done in the next day or two between oh. my, my work and my dad where we've been, I've just found myself uh, running around, uh, but I'll, I'll create, it shouldn't be hard to pull together a proposal and I'll get it to everyone and get your feedback on it. And uh, I'll, I'll try in the proposal, I'll try to lay out a timeline uh, of when we're going to get the information to the clubs, what we expect from the clubs, um, and then, you know, our, award, uh, our, our process for awarding winners. 
and we'll set up a meeting with Brooks through the week sometime um, well, after Easter. Is your idea that we end up inviting Brooks to the next steering committee meeting or a separate? I, I think I think it, why don't we do it <clears throat> because we're not sure what this is going to do to people's weekday time timetables. So we should find a date that's good for Brooks and probably good for us and then put it to people and, and sort of uh, say this is a, the date people who can join can join and people who can't can watch the recording. Would that be a good idea? Yeah, that's fine. It's just a meet. It's just, you know, probably five, 10 minutes for them just to meet us. Um, they're just nice people who like what we're doing. Yeah, I think I'd see something like the Microsoft one, which was like a half an hour of, you know, just having a chat about possible future things that we could do with them or whatever. So let's um, let's set something up and people can join if they if they can join. Sounds good. Sometime in April. Okay, I'll, I'll run it by them. It, it would be on um, Pacific time. So something that's not too horrible for you guys. Yep, that'd be nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, and the last thing I had here was a five-year plan. So at the moment, I, I got the get the feel that we're doing quite well, and everyone says to me that they're doing too much work for IFR, and um, we're, we're brutalizing people to get them to write newsletters and, um, <laughs> and do stuff. But uh, I think it, there's a sense that um, we're, we're, we're sort of coasting a little bit, and I was just wondering if people wanted to put together a little committee to think about things we could do in the future or review what we're doing now. Uh, I don't know how people feel about the current organization and um, how it's performing and what we, whether the activities that we have are adequate or if there's other things people want to suggest. Um, what do, what do people feel about getting a bit more of a, a bit more of structure around or do, do we feel that the structure that we've got at the moment is fine? I'm pretty good with the structure. One question I might have is whether we might want to look into um, resurrecting the international front runner games in the future. Um, so that's, that's one possibility. That's something that we did um, in two years from the gay games. We held it at various cities, uh, sort of an invitational event where all the front runner clubs got together. It was an opportunity to have a uh, competition. Uh, so people were more prepared for the gay games when they came around. It, that was the idea behind it. Um, maybe less crucial for the European groups that have more, more uh, opportunity, more competition, but uh, that, was, that was one idea. So this was a running, different sorts of dis different running events that were all held at a certain time, was it? Right, so it, in general, it was, the, it was the AGM, two years from the, the date of the gay game. So there would be a host club and they would uh, host the meeting. And then in addition to the meeting, there is uh, generally a weekend of events and it included say a 5K, 10K and some track and field events. Um, uh, and that was the, the general format of it. So we had it. We had a track. Uh, it, it took place in uh, New York, uh, Toronto, uh, Long Beach. Um, uh, let's see, Berlin, and uh, Seattle, and New York. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, those are the the cities where it has taken place. Okay. So, Alden, I don't. I I understand sort of the merit of that. I yeah. wonder if there travel. I feel like yeah. adds a burden that that yeah. immediately has some limitations associated with it. And I wonder if we couldn't do something along those lines, but more virtually. Um, right. Richard That's certainly Chris, an option. I think. Richard and Chris, I had floated an idea by, by you guys through email about um, maybe doing a global virtual sort of um, uh, competition not unlike the one that the San Francisco front runner team did this past fall for the, they called it the front runner fall invitational where the different clubs assembled teams and all did a weekly 5K, five miler, 
uh, 15K and it, it happened over four consecutive weeks and everyone submitted their results and it was scored like a, a US cross country meet. Um, and it just, it generated some cross club sort of competition and sort of rivalry and, and interest and, and I- Camaraderie, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and I thought it was, it was, and I notice now like the, the, the more competitive groups um, Seattle and New York and San Francisco are now sort of chatting each other up over Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that in ways that I don't think they were previously. Um, so I think it was a good, especially in the COVID environment, it kept people motivated. Mm -hmm. And I really felt that it could create an opportunity for some good cross club communication and activities. And I feel like we could potentially do that at a higher scale um so i just thought that you know that that might be something we could consider so who would um sorry richie were you about to say something uh, i was going to say alex soharto has pushed for this a bit also yeah. using our uh, using his strava um front runners list which is i think at like two thousand people now uh, but I, the feeling I get from Alex is he's proposing the idea, but he doesn't want to do the work. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can, I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. I, I said to him, Alex, it's fine. It sounds great. Feel free to do that. But, uh, no, that's not, I think his, his idea was he'll tell me to do it and I'm, I don't have time. Yeah. It's a lot of, it, it is work yeah. as would, as would, uh, you know, a destination international act sports event as well right. normally the destination ones are are coordinated by the cities that uh, offer to host them and you know in the past uh, new york has had them san francisco has had them so that it is it is doable if the city wants to do the work um, just, you have to find people willing to do the work So more virtual um, activities. I'm hearing. Do we do we want to do we want to get together and just have a planning meeting for that, or is it is it okay to just uh, suggest new ideas at these steering committee meetings? Mm -hmm. Are people happy to continue to do that, or do we think we need more planning? We're happy with the current organisation. The other option is uh, people could think on it a bit and um, maybe send suggestions back in. Yep. Maybe to you, Chris, if, if you want to gather some of those together, if people need some time to think. Yes, so, all right, that's a good idea. Um, so for the next meeting, if people could come together with, if, if you do have anything burning in your mind like these ideas, <laughs> uh, we, can put them, we can put them down and have a think about them. I think with the idea of running a virtual run, it's very a very good idea. And as you say, there are, people who do it um but there's usually a, a like a, a fee but then you usually get some merch and things like that too which people seems to motivate people too so i know there was, was in the san diego one and the seattle one um you know of course i didn't get the t-shirt or anything like that because of all the shipping issues uh with with covid they wouldn't ship outside the u.s but um it's uh it's, it seems to be very motivating for people to get out and, and go for a run and you should have you should have you should have done Palm Springs. We shipped internationally. I think I, I think I might have enrolled in Palm Springs, but I don't know that I actually did it. So, <laughs> I think I got a buff from you. Like, is that something you shipped? No, we just did t-shirts and masks. Maybe oh, okay. a mask. Okay. Oh well, in that case, maybe I didn't do Palm Springs. I was certainly yeah. aware of it. So this is the other thing: is that it raises awareness of the people's clubs. So that's good too. But yeah, we need somebody who's an who's an organizer who's willing to like take a small fee to actually do the work, perhaps, and we could promote it. Um, but they somebody else has to do the work if there's no person who's obviously willing to volunteer for it. Well, Nick, Nick in um, uh, San Francisco uh, organized the last one, and he manages a chain of shoe st running store running shoe stores in the Bay Area. We could always reach out to him and see if he's interested in staging such an event again, but 
more on a worldwide basis. Okay. That's a good idea. I'm happy to ask him. Yeah. All right. If you do that, Richard, that'd be good. Okay. Because I think that was a good format. I think the problem was that we found out about it a little too late to get everybody geared up for it. So it's sort of on us before we realized what was happening. And then suddenly um, people were behind, you know, they hadn't been to the first week or whatever. And, and then people aren't that involved with it. But if you promote it early enough, then you'll get more interest. Okay, I'll reach out to them. Okay. All right, that brings us to the end. Uh, oh, and time. Um, does anybody have anything more that they want to bring up? How are things in the regions? Anything exciting happening in any of the regions? I think that it certainly in my region, I mean, people are just trying to rebuild at this point. I know that East Bay, San Diego, and San Francisco had their first meetups in over a year within the last two weeks. So I think for most of our clubs, it's just about getting back to normal. And Honolulu, Michael, we went to, Xander and I did the Honolulu's first. Uh, oh, good. Just before we left for back to New York and had a nice, nice trip, with about 10 people. Good for some. <laughs> You be you don't say anything, Wayne. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> what, what? They mustn't. They mustn't find out about Australia. <laughs> because you have no COVID, right? Right. Oh or no, you, no, two, no. Two cases. That's right. They have two cases, and they're about to shut down international travel again. Oh. <laughs> and there's go, go put put Brisbane into a a mask lockdown for two cases for a week if they're not careful. If they can't find. If they can't track everybody down, they're currently calling 20,000 people to try and figure out who's been in contact with who for those two cases. And if they can't track down all 20,000, then yes, the city will go into another mask lockdown just to stop having any cases at all. And I, heard I heard there's a lady in Tasmania who has a splinter. Oh, that'd be a better <laughs> In a bum. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, we're overreacting the other way now. But we had uh, uh, we had a nice call, Sam and, and, and us a few. It was what a month ago. Last it was about a month ago. We had a nice southern uh, region, southern U.S. region call with all the with a bunch of the clubs. That went well. It did. It did. It was a lot of fun. So I believe they're also doing good. I'll reach out to them soon to uh plan something i guess in the next couple of months to see what's happening for everyone this summer yes i miss some of the zoom uh lunch time for us or you know the uh the zoom happy hour calls from some of the running clubs that was that was a fun thing that we could uh actually participate in other people's meetings and and, and chats while we had this uh COVID thing but anyway it's good to get back to normal all right, so I think we should get the date for the next one so that we can get that out there, the next meeting. Um, how, how do people feel? What do we, when do we want to get together again? We'll have the Brooks meeting sometime in April, but for a steering committee meeting, what would be good for people? Are you thinking sometime in June or do we need something ahead of that because of uh, pride activities? Well, um, Nick, Nick, when do you think we should meet? Because you've got the next great big event on. Right. Um, well, so the next information we'll have is hopefully mid-April. So I would suggest... May? Uh, yeah. Sometime in, mid -May. sometime in May. Yeah. All right. So um, do does... Do we want to say this time again in May, say either the 17th or the 24th? Oh, sorry, for that's me. Uh, the 16th, <laughs> the 16th or the 23rd? Do you want to do your do your magic with a doodle again? Well, I, I, <laughs> because I think, you know we're being let out that week. That's the week we can go out to the pub. Which week? And being a being a British being a British person, I've got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> so I'm just you. saying the social. The, the calendar may fill up quickly. So what? <laughs> which day in May are you being, um, is your cage being opened? The cage is being opened, most literally. I think it's the, uh, 
is it, I can't find the date. It's about the 12th of May, I think, is the scheduled date. Oh, dear. All right. And that's then, a, so I'll, so that's, a, that's a Wednesday. To, so I'm like, well, <laughs> pick a day. I'm likely to be sober probably sometime in November. <laughs> so would it be better to have it on the 9th? Is that too soon? <laughs> <laughs> or we make it we make it the uh, the twenty third, and give give Nick a week to get out of the system. Yeah. So let's let's 20, say the twenty third of May. That works. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. We'll we'll put it in for this time anyhow. Perfect. And see if people come back and say they can't attend. But twenty third May. Just... Just to show that pre proactivity works, by the way, that um, whilst we've been on this call, Aberdeen has now updated. Uh, so all the Northern European <laughs> clubs are now yeah. updated. There you go. Very good. <laughs> okay. Well, if Cross there's them off the list. <laughs> Just yeah. going to get Blackpool. Right. <laughs> they're, they're not approved yet. It's fine. They don't count. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. We'll see you next time. Yep. Thank you. Good to, good to chat with everyone. Bye. See you. Bye. Thank you.